we're going to be dealing with something we've never dealt with before. We're creating these alien beings. We just don't know what's going to happen. We've created alien beings smarter than ourselves. At present, we don't know how we can guarantee we'll stay in control. It's so good for so many things that we're not going to slow it down. Do you think AI will become conscious? Yes. This conversation with Jeffrey Hinton was made possible thanks to Gitex, the world's largest tech and AI conference. It's a great honor having you here. You recently raised your estimate of risk that AI could wipe out humanity from 10% to 20%. What especially made you raise this estimate? Okay, um, nobody can estimate this risk sensibly. There's no real sensible way to estimate it because we're going to be dealing with something we've never dealt with before. We're creating these alien beings and we just don't know what's going to happen. So really the right thing to say about the risk is we're entering the unknown. We, get, we know that, or we believe that, sometime in the next 10 to 20 years probably, we will enter the unknown where we've created alien beings smarter than ourselves. And the risk that they'll wipe us out, we just don't know. Because at present we don't know how we can guarantee we'll stay in control. We should be doing research on that urgently, but different people have different estimates of the risks, um, and there's no sensible way to estimate them. I think it's ridiculous to think they're less than 1%, and I think it's ridiculous to think it's more than 99%. Um, in between, it's very hard to say. What scare you the most in AI development today? The speed at which it's developing, um, it's so good for so many things that we're not going to slow it down. The competition between companies and the competition between countries is going to mean it keeps going fast and is used for many good things, making many, many industries more productive. So we're not going to slow it down, but we urgently need to be working on can we keep in control of it? Do you think AI will become conscious? Yes. I think Already, multimodal chatbots have subjective experience. In the BBC radio interview, you said the difference between humans and AI will be like a difference between humans and three years old child. This is right? It will become like that, yes. It'll get much smarter than us. If you look at something like AlphaGo that plays Go, it plays Go much better than any human ever will. Will humanity to be most intelligent or second most intelligent? Will be the second most intelligent. In 2023, you left Google so you could speak freely. What was Google stopped you from saying? Okay, people have widely misreported that and I try and correct it every time and people never listen. I left Google because I was 75 and wanted to retire. I took that opportunity to talk about the dangers of AI, but not to criticize Google. I thought Google had behaved very responsible, but I could foresee that there was this existential threat from AI that it would eventually take over from us, and I wanted to talk about that. So it wasn't out of um, dissatisfaction with Google. In fact, Google um, was perfectly happy for me to talk about that while staying at Google. Some experts like Jan Lacuna, I remember my conversation with him in New York, call you a catastrophist. Is that a real scientific debate or just smack talk? Oh, I think there's a real scientific debate. I think he's sincere. He thinks there's very little risk of AI taking over. I think there's a significant risk. Some other people like Yurkowski think it's almost certain to take over. There's a very wide range of opinions, which is what you might expect if we're entering completely unknown territory. He had a bit of a change of mind uh, two years ago where the quest of his career was to figure out the learning algorithm of the, of the cortex of the brain. Uh, he always thought that backpropagation, which is the main technique that we use to train neural nets uh, today, which he had something to do with and yeah. had something to do with as well, he always thought that was not what the brain used because and the brain must be using something else because backpropagation is not really kind of biologically uh, plausible. Uh, and and so he kept coming up with sort of new ways of doing machine learning every two years for the last four years. Um, and two years ago, he just gave up. He said, well, maybe 
the brain doesn't use backpropagation, but backpropagation works really well, and maybe that's what we need. Maybe it works even better than maybe whatever it is that the brain uses. Mm -hmm. And so, so he had this epiphany and then retired. Basically, he could declare victory. How can AI change radiology development, and how can it help in the early stage of cancer prediction? Okay. Um, I made a prediction in 2016 that within five years, um, AI would have replaced radiologists for reading medical scans, and I was wrong. It's going to take longer than that. It may take 15 years. But already, there have been 250 applications certified by the FDA um, using AI for interpreting medical images. Currently, it's comparable with radiologists of many different kinds of medical images. I'm convinced that in maybe another five or 10 years, um, images will be read by AI with just a radiologist looking over its shoulder. Um, and it'll give much better interpretations. We know that AI can see many more things in these images than people can. In images of the retina, for example, AI can see all sorts of things that ophthalmologists were never able to see. So it'll greatly improve interpretation of medical images. A few months ago, we had the privilege of opening the Nobel conference with the very first question directed to Jeffrey Hinton. Today, that dialogue continues. Welcome to this uh, press conference and the Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences. And of course, a special welcome to our laureates. My name is Hans Ellegren. I'm the Secretary General of the Academy. I open the press conference. Who would like to start, please? And my first question is to Professor Jeffrey Hinton. You are the father of artificial neutral networks. When you look at AI development today, do you regret something? There's two kinds of regret. There's guilty regret when you did something and at the time you knew you shouldn't have done it. I don't have any of that. If in the same circumstances, I would do the same again. However, I think it might have been unfortunate in that um, we're going to get superintelligence faster than I thought. And I wish I'd thought about safety earlier. Achieve this level or is the marketing tick of big tech a huge companies? I think both Demis and I believe we are going to get super intelligence. It's not hype and it's not designed to distract from other, other problems with AI. It's what we have believed for a long time. Now, I thought it would be much further away, but the speed of recent developments means I think it's going to be quite soon. I think between five and 20 years, I think Demis thinks in about 10 years, we'll get something like superintelligence. And we have to worry seriously about how we stay in control of it. Whether regulation today is capable of halting the development of artificial intelligence and how all of this relates to the ubiquitous interests of big tech companies, including those driven by profit. A point to make first is that um, one of the shorter term dangers of AI is the development of lethal autonomous weapons. And there isn't going to be any regulation there. If you look at the European regulations, for example, they have a specific clause in them that says none of these regulations apply to military uses of AI. So governments are unwilling to regulate themselves when it comes to lethal autonomous weapons. And there is an arms race going on between all the major arms suppliers, like the United States, China, Russia, Britain, Israel, and possibly even Sweden, though I don't know. 